court to the middle of the field. Cusick Park is the venue for the county final between Clarecastle and St. Joseph's. It's a wet and windy day here in Cusick Park. The underfoot conditions are very difficult indeed. The referee for this afternoon's game is Shawnee McMahon of Namarkin and Fergus. The two captains in the centre of the field, Kieran O'Neill, the captain of St. Joseph's, who will play at right half-back, and the full-back for Clarecastle, Martin Sheedy. I think Clark Castle seemed to have won the toss and the signal from Martin Sheedy was that they would play from right to left in the first half, playing into the town goal. It's very difficult conditions for the players out there. The under-16 game just before it cut up the pitch somewhat and the rain is starting to come down here once again. Clark Castle's number 15, Gerard Sparrow Lockton, who has just returned from honeymoon and he will take up his customary place at left corner forward. Very dangerous forward indeed when on song. <laughs> Clark Castle left half back, Anthony Daly, who has given great service down the years to Clark Castle and Claire Hurling. <laughs> so as the teams line up behind the Tuller Pipe Band for the pre-match parade, St. Joseph's led by their captain Kieran O'Neill, Clark Castle led by their captain Martin Sheedy. And the teams will line out as follows. First, the Clark Castle team. In goals, John Casey. Right fullback, Ger Kenny. Fullback, Martin Sheedy, the captain of the side. And left cornerback, Bernard Scandon. The halfback line on the right, Pat Healy. In the centre, Stephen Sheedy. And on the left, Anthony Daly. Centre field, Victor Lockton and James Healy. The half over line on the right, Fergus Toohey. In the centre, Alan Neville. And on the left, Denny Scanlon. The full forward line, right full, Robert Fitzgerald. Full forward, Ken Ralph, and top of the left, Gerald Sparrow Lockton. And the St. Joseph's line out is as follows. In goals, Patsy Fahey. Right full back, Ger Hoy. Full back, Donald Cahill. And left full, Kenneth Kennedy. The half back line on the right, Kieran O'Neill, the captain of the side. In the centre, Sean McMahon. And on the left, Larkin Hassad. Centre field, Dermot Daly. And the good news from St. St. Joseph's camp is that Ali Baker will take his place in the centre of the field, wearing number nine. The half-forward line on the right, Andrew Whelan. In the centre, Greg Baker. And on the left, James O'Connor. Full forward line wearing 13, Fergal O'Sullivan. Full forward, Noel Brody. And top of the left, Colin Mullen. A big crowd gathered into Cusick Park, but promises to be a cracking game of hurling. But unfortunately, the weather has dampened the thing somewhat. The pitch is very, very slippy on top, and it'll make conditions very difficult for the players to hold their footing. So as the teams parade over the far side, a very big crowd gathered into the covered stand at the far side of the field. They give both teams a rousing reception. Interest, of course, was never as high before in Clare for the last couple of years. Since Clare brought the Lee McCarthy Cup to Clare in 95 and then did the same thing this year in the year of 97. So a great buzz of expectancy around the county and everybody looking forward to a very good game today. Everybody says Clare Castle are strong favourites, but St. Joseph's will play little heed to that. They came back from an eight-point deficit in the semi-final against Six Mile Bridge and snapped victory just at the end with a goal from Molly Baker. Clare Castle last won the title in 1994, and if they can win today's title, two players, the two Lockton brothers, will become the first two players from Clare Castle to hold five county titles. Tommy Howard and substitute will also be the third player to have that distinction. St. Joseph's who appeared in the final in 94 were beaten by Clare Castle. They have to go back to 1958 for their last victory. They won it also in 1954, so a 39-year gap hoping to be bridged here this afternoon. St. Joseph's limbering up under the tuition there of Louis Mulqueen. Louis was also the physical trainer to the Clare Minor side won this year's All-Ireland Final. The number four there in your picture, Ken Kennedy, who played at fullback for the Clare Miners. A very promising young player indeed. It'll be interesting to see whether Ali Baker will take his place in the centre of the field, or if he plays into the forward line, whether those ankle ligaments have cured sufficient. So the taller pipe bend entertain the crowd before the start of the game. The rain's slightly beginning to come down once again. So 
So everything is in readiness. August Anish, our own Navian. Pipe and parade off the field. Both teams gone back into their positions. Straight away, I see Ali Baker has gone to full forward, wearing number nine. And Noel Brody is out playing centre field. That's James O'Connor is centre half forward, so the number of changes. As Shawnee McMahon sets the game in motion, Victor Lockton up the far side, up towards Fergie Tuhi. Switches direction in play, swings it across over towards the Sparrow, Jerhoe pulls. First time to over across on towards Robert Fitzgerald. Who's been in great form out in recent times for Clackastle and he fires it in. Oh, dangerous ball as it drops inside. As the Sparrow is creeping in on that one. This is Ken Ralph trying to gain possession very close to the end line. And that's gone for a 65. Went off the stick there of Donald Cahill. will be taken by the right half back Pat Healy a very accurate free taker from long distances accounted for four points in the semi-final against O'Callaghan Smells Pat Healy strikes goalwards but this one has just gone to the left and it's gone wide the rain has lifted off the sun trying to break out through an overcast sky the underfoot conditions are very difficult indeed. Patsy Fahey with the puck out. James Healy bats it down. Out comes the centre half back, Sean McMahon. Gets it on to Dermot Daly. Searching one down into the corner. Racing after it is Andrew Whelan. Andrew who is that left knee heavily bandaged. This is a dangerous ball as it swings in across. Out comes the keeper, John Casey. The danger still is not cleared. But Bernard Scanlon is there for Clarkastle. He gets it out a little. Jerk Kenny pulls there for Clarkastle. Ball breaks to James O'Connor. Well blocked down by Jerk Kenny. Out comes the centre half back, Martin Sheedy. Gets it as far as his own 65. But Dermot Daly is there for St. Joseph's. Returns and towards goals. But it's gone to the left and gone wide. So no score after two and a half minutes of play. The breeze has died somewhat. The flags over the scoreboard were blowing fairly strongly during the under-16 game. But they have are hanging limp now on the flag poles. The puck out up this side. Greg Baker tries to get a stick to it. First time's it in. All breaks back towards the centre half forward. Baker swings it over across. Andrew Wheeler, Andrew Wheeler races out for it. Can't get position. He's playing at left corner forward. This is James Healy. Didn't get as much distance as he would have wished into that one. Larkin has it. Launches a very high one down. It goes off the stick of the keeper. John Casey, but it goes over the crossbar. The first score of the game coming from Larkin has it. Larkin, who's the son of Petty, who played at cornerback in the 1958 team for St. Joseph's. He gets the first score of this county final after three and a half minutes of play. The puck out drops down on the 65. Victor Lockton first times it in. Out comes Kent Kennedy. 
Noel Brody played exceptionally well in the semi-final when he kept to midfield. This is Ali Baker. Baker grabs it. Plays it in towards Andrew Whelan. Bernard Scanlon is there for Clark Castle. Bernard Scanlon gets it out. Out towards Victor Lockton. Danny Scanlon is also in there. Scanlon gains position. Goes by two tackles. Sets up a Clark Castle attack. Sean McMahon is there for St. Joseph's. Sean an outstanding center halfback. He scored six points in the semi-final against Six Mile Bridge. So to be <laughs> One of the Clark Castle players there receiving attention. The center half forward, Alan Neville, seems to have picked up a shoulder injury. But he's ready to resume. And the free will be taken by Sean McMahon. About 10 metres outside his own 45. McMahon strikes a long one. Dangerous ball as it drops inside. Breaks out as far as the centre half back, Stephen Sheedy. Molly Baker. Trying to go by the challenge of Jerk Kenny. Baker swings it outfield. Out towards Noel Brody. Brody on the 45. Looks goalwards. Strikes it in and sends it straight between the balls. is Donald Mackey of the Monster Game. Donald, a very promising start by St. Joseph's. Excellent start by St. Joseph's. Good to see um, the full forward there. Um, Molly Baker picking up the action, sending a tick. Uh, Noel Brody on an excellent score by Noel. So the puck out by John Casey drops into the centre of the field. Kieran O'Neill, the captain for St. Joseph's. Jerk Kenny out first to this one, being pursued by Andrew Whelan. Ball breaks to Pat Healy. Up towards Fergie Tuhi. Fergie trying to gain position. It won't come up for him. The underfoot conditions very difficult indeed. This is Danny Scanlon in position. Lays it on to Fergie Tuhi. Tuhi drops it in. Kin Ralph grabs it inside. Ralph, oh, great save! A great save by Patsy Fahey. A great save by Fahey from Kin Ralph. The Sparrow sends it back in. This is Ralph again. Ralph strikes it high, but it's got to the left and wide. Done an excellent save there by the keeper Patsy Fay. Excellent because the ball looked to be going to his right. He dived that way and got it. And certainly Ken Ralph who played some club hurling minor level with Tipperary has been a proven forward for Clare Castle. The puck out over the far side. Dermot Daly trying to gain position. Ball breaks away from him. Colin Mullen in position, who was a member of that Clare team who won the All-Ireland final. Dangerous ball as it drops it inside. John Casey gets a stick to it, and it's gone out for a 65. St. Joseph's are playing with the aid of the breeze in the first half. It's not a very strong breeze, but it's blowing from the town goals, favouring St. Joseph's in this first half. Oliver Plunkett and Ger Ward are discussing tactics as Sean McMahon strikes it high and sends it straight between the poles. And Sean, for the minute he left his stick, he knew it was going straight over. The quick puck out, but the referee, Shawnee McMahon, is not happy that the puck out was taken too quickly. So after seven and a half minutes of play, St. Joseph's leading by three points to no score. John Casey with the puck out. There was a doubt about his fitness before the game. He picked up an injury during the week. This is Victor Lachlan in position. Lays it in towards Danny Scanlon, being pursued by Kieran O'Neill. The referee has penalised the St. Joseph's captain there for a push in the back. So it'll be a free in to Clark Castle. And it'll be the full forward, Kin Ralph, the one to take it. He's the leading scorer in Clare to date. Put a, a very high score of three goals and 17 points in the campaign to date. Finn strikes it in and sends it straight between the poles. So it's now three goals and 18 points for Ken Ralph. So the first goal for Clark Castle coming after eight and a half minutes. So three points to one. Oh, very sharp puck out by Patsy Fahey. Grabbed by Danny Scanlon. Just inside the 45, Scanlon strikes a goal words, But that's gone harmlessly to the left and wide. Clark Castle's third wide of the game. Patsy Fahey with the puck out. 
on towards James e. O'Connor. Greg Baker trying to get position. Sends it down towards Fregal O'Sullivan. James e. O'Connor nips in. Lovely control there by James E. Swings it in. Jer Kenny and Andrew Whelan inside. The ball breaks behind them. But the uh, ever alert Pat Healy is back covering from the right half back position. Colin Mullen pays it over to Andrew Whelan. Whelan strikes it in, goes by Ali Baker, Anthony Daly, very short clearance from Anthony Daly. It comes to Fergie Tuhi, back helping out in defence. Strikes a long one upfield, Sean McMahon gets a stick to it. Sean McMahon and Alan Neville clash. Robert Fitzgerald in position. The referee has penalised him that he played the ball on the ground, so it's going to be a free to St. Joseph's. And again, it'll be Sean McMahon. One of the best long-range strikers in the game. <laughs> 55 metres from his own goal. Sean McMahon. Didn't get as much distance as he would have wished into that one. Ali Baker tries to get a stick to it. Ball breaks out to James e. O'Connor. James E. Hook by James Healy. James E. gets it at the second attempt, strikes it in, and sends it up straight between the poles. So James E.'s first score of the game. So Joseph's lead by four points to one. John Casey with the puck out. So St. Joseph's go into a three point lead. This is Larkin Hassad. That one has gone over the touchline. It's going to be a sideline cut to Clark Castle. That half-back line of Kieran O'Neill, Sean McMahon and Larkin Hassett have been very dominant in their games in the championship to date. Eleven and a half minutes gone in this first half. Pat Healy with the sideline cut. Cuts a very low one. Larkin Hassett and Fergie too. He clashed for it. The referee has blown the whistle. He's awarding a free to Clark Castle. And the free taker, I'm sure, will be the right half back, Pat Healy. A couple of metres inside the St. Jo outside the St. Joseph 65 and about two metres in from the far touch line. Pat Healy with the free. Drops it in, up their eyes for it inside. Got out a little by Donald Cahill. This is the centre half forward, Alan Neville. Well blocked by Sean McMahon. Danny Scanlon and Kieran O'Neill tussling for it. It's still not clear, but this is the full back, Donald Cahill. Finding it difficult to hold his footing. Goes off the hand of Fergie Tuhi. Noel Brody for St. Joseph's. Brings it over this side, Anthony Daly gets a stick to it, won't come up, it's not a day for jabbing with one hand, this is James e. O'Connor, James e. from the 45, swings it in and James e. sends it straight over the bar, second point by James e. O'Connor, so St. Joseph's opening up a four point gap, St. Joseph's looking very good in the early stages. An excellent point by James, he's second in quick succession with 12 and a half minutes gone, certainly James e. knows how to find the target. One of the Clark Castle players has picked up an injury. It seems to be the center halfback, Stephen Sheedy, who's receiving attention. It seems to be a, a facial knock he has got. But Stephen, I'm sure, will resume his position at center halfback. John Casey with the puck out. Paul Brody gets a stick to it. Johnny McMahon has blown the whistle. He has penalised Noel Brody. So it's going to be a free to Clark Castle. Anthony Daly with the free. Uprises the commanding figure of Sean McMahon. First times it out. Stephen Sheedy and James O'Connor. James flicks it away. Comes towards Noel Brody. The referee has penalised Victor Lockton. The 
the challenge came in from behind, so it's a free to St. Joseph's. And it certainly could be very costly giving away frees anywhere from out around the middle, back as far as the other 65 with a free taker of the calibre of Sean McMahon around. It's a couple of metres inside his own half. Sean looks at the target. Sean jabs it up and makes no mistakes. Straight between the poles. Very accurate striking by the centre half back, Sean McMahon. Clark Hassel with John Casey with the puck out. Nicely grabbed by James Healy. James Healy who came into the side today and Ken Morrissey was dropped off the team. So it's a free to Clark Castle. And it'll be the right half back, Pat Healy, to take it. About 60 metres from the St. Joseph's goal. Pat Healy jabs it up. Dangerous one as it drops inside. Ken Ralph. Oh, it's a goal! It's a goal for Clark Castle. As the ball came in, Ken Ralph let fly first time. And see Patty who made a great save early on. Seemed to be somewhat unsighted as that one went in over his right shoulder. So that could be the tonic that Clark Castle need to get him get the rhythm going. An excellent score by Ken Ralph. A great free by Pat Healy. Ken Ralph, the right position to find the goal. So that's going to be a sideline cut. It'll be a sideline cut to St. Joseph's. It'll be Dermot Daly to take it. Or no, it's going to be a throw-in ball. Sixteen and a half minutes gone in this first half. Two points between the sides. And that's going to be a sideline cut to Clark Castle. Quickly taken, back to Anthony Daly. Daly strikes it upfield. Out comes Sean McMahon once again. Oh, and that was a high dangerous tackle there. On Sean McMahon. And Shawnee McMahon having a word there with Victor Lachlan. It's going to be a free to St. Joseph's. Sean McMahon from just outside his own 65. Traps it up and strikes it in, but this one is curling. It's gone to the right and wide. That's just St. Joseph's second wide of the game. So the margin just two points. Six points for St. Joseph's. One goal and one for Clarecastle. Both the Clarecastle scores having come from Kin Ralph. Ball drops in the centre. Well grabbed by James Healy. Healy soloing upfield, strikes it in. Gerda Lachlan trying to latch onto this one. Donald Cahill is in there. Cahill gets it out towards Kenneth Kennedy. Rides the challenge well, gets his turns. But it's gone over the touchline. It's going to be a sideline cut to the Magpies. Anthony Daly to take the sideline cut. These two sides have met for the last three years in the championship. In 94, it was in the, a repeat of this year's final when Clark Castle came out on top. They also were victorious in 95 and 96. Good cut by Anthony Daly. Over towards Robert Fitzgerald. Pat Healy in possession. Healy strikes goalwards and he sends it straight between the poles. Very good point by Pat Healy. Almost 19 minutes gone. One point separating the sides. Six points to one two. Anthony Daly's under. Ball breaks behind. James O'Connor flicks it in. There is Bernard Scanlon for Clarecastle. Scanlon leaves it behind him. The players having great difficulty in holding their footing. Flicked on towards James O'Connor. James E. looks at the target. Strikes it in. That seems to be well on its way. Oh, a lovely point. Jamesy O'Connor's third point of the game. A beauty of a score by Jamesy. 
excellent score by James E. He had difficulty in finding his footing, but certainly James E. has the accuracy and taking the score very well. John Casey with the puck out. Ball breaks to Greg Baker. James Healy nips in. James O'Connor is also in there trying to gain possession. First time done by Noel Brody. Out comes Jer Kenny. Plays it off to Pat Healy. Been chased by Andrew Whelan. Still Pat Healy boots it upfield. Larkin has it is under it, can't control it. This is Fergie Tuhi in possession. Tuhi strikes goalwards. Yes, that's a very good point. A very good point by Fergie Tuhi. So the margin is back to one point. Fergie, who was Clare's top scorer in the All Ireland final of 1995, he seems to have switched positions, has gone to centre half forward, and Alan Neville has gone to right half. Puck out out this side, batted down by Victor Lockton. And towards Fergal O'Sullivan. Victor Lockton in position. Bernard Scanlon well flicked away by Fergal O'Sullivan. It's going to be a sideline cut to Clare Castle. Clare Castle team manager Roger McMahon, who was a, a mascot for the Clare Castle team in 1970. Roger was part of the Clare Castle team of 86 and 87. He won two county championships. Anthony Daly with the sideline cut. Well grabbed by Noel Brody. Down towards Fergal O'Sullivan. In nips Anthony Daly, boots it out without the hurley. Larkin has it and Ellen Neville tussles for it. Ball breaks to Pat Healy. Over towards Victor Lockton. Victor gains position. Strikes off his left hand side. Well batted away by Jerhoy. Jerhoy first times it down the centre. Stephen Sheedy touches it on to Pat Healy. Up into the corner, there is Sean McMahon. Anthony Daly back covering. Stephen Sheedy is also in there for Clockastle. Seemed to take a lot of steps. Well blocked by Fergal O'Sullivan. That's going to be a free in and a bit of argy bargy going on in there. Players on both sides beginning to get involved. Seems to be a few punches thrown. Shawnee McMahon in there having a word with a couple of players. Yes, Liam, that all goes back to a clip there by the centre half back Stephen Sheedy on James E. O'Connor as he came out. And I suppose that ignited the flame, but hopefully Sean McMahon will be able to cool things down and the game will continue in a good sporting manner. For the referee, Shawnee McMahon, having a word with two players. He has called Greg Baker and Bernard Scanlon. The notebook is out. He's booking the two players, the left corner back and the centre half forward. Greg Baker is wearing 11, but he's playing at right half forward. So just one point separating the side, seven points to one tree. Almost 24 minutes gone in this first half. Shawnee McMahon is about to throw in the ball. Greg Baker and Anthony Daly, the two in for it. Anthony Daly comes away with a hoop as he tries to get his shot in. Nicely controlled by Noel Brody. Brody gets it in a little. Again there, Anthony Daly is there for Clarkassel. Jarga Lachlan comes out to been closely marked by Jer Hoy. Good corner back play by Hoy. Down the centre, Anthony Daly is there. Colin Mullen in towards Fergal O'Sullivan. 
Well hooked by Bernard Scanlon. It's cutting up very, very much. Anthony Daly changes direction. Swings it over the far side. Under it is Larkin Hassett. Robert Fitzgerald out a long ways from his corner forward position. Gets it in the centre. The referee has penalised Sean McMahon. And he has the notebook out there as the pull came from behind. And it's going to be a free to Clare Castle. Gone into the book. The sparrow, Gerhoy, waits for it inside as Patsy Fahey, the goalkeeper, organises his defence. Seems to be a, another switch on this. St. Joseph's team, Fergal O'Sullivan, has gone to left half forward and Colin Mullen has gone to the right corner. The free from Ken Ralph and sends it straight between the poles. So that's a goal and two points for Ken Ralph. Came into the game with a tally of 317. It's now 419. Situations tied up at 1-4 to 7 points. Fergal O'Sullivan tries to gain possession. Nicely picked up by James Healy. In put under pressure by James O'Connor. In nips Dermot Daly. Daly soaring out this side. Well robbed by Fergie Tuhi. Tuhi strikes goalworth and he sends it straight between the poles. Fergie Tuhi's second point to the game. So Clark Castle have really come back into it. Great score by Fergie Tuhi when his side looked to be drifting out of the game. He picked up that ball, had to, took the responsibility and sent it straight over the bar. So one point this, between the sides. Remember St. Joseph's led by five at one stage. It's now Clark Castellor leading by one. Victor Lockton bets it down. Fergie Tuhi lays it over to Danny Scanlon. In towards Ken Ralph. Oh, the ball breaks inside. This is Sparrow Lockton. Sparrow with the shot. And it seemed to take a deflection off one of those. I think it was off the stick of Gerhoi and went over the crossbar. Sparrow's first point of the game, coming after 27 minutes. Patsy Fahey with the puck out. Ball flicked in inside. This is Jer Kenny for Clark Castle. Robert Fitzgerald close to the far touchline. The linesman has the flag up that Robert Fitzgerald had stepped over the touchline. It's going to be a sideline cut to St. Joseph's. It'll be Larkin has it to take the sideline cut. Cuts a good one. James Healy bets it down. Greg Baker swings it over across. James Healy playing well in the centre of the field. Nicely blocked down by Larkin has it. In nips James e. O'Connor. is Danny Scanlon lays it into Alan Neville Neville strikes a dangerous one in towards goals the sparrow rises for it can't hold on to it this is the captain Kieran O'Neill O'Neill gets his clearance Andrew Whelan is there for St. Joseph's launches a long one down towards Ali Baker Martin Sheedy is in there so is the keeper John Casey Martin Sheedy is the one who comes away with it Drops it back into the centre of the field. Alan Neville trying to gain position. Flicks it on. Sean McMahon is there for St. Joseph's. McMahon playing a very, very sound game at centre halfback. Down this side. Greg Baker sends it in towards his brother Ali. I want it too much pace in it. Martin Sheedy has gone down injured. This is Victor Lockton in position. Well batted out by Gerhoy, playing very soundly at the right corner back. Kieran O'Neill in position. Over towards Andrew Whelan. James is running loose. Can't hold on to it the first time. James is still can't hold on to it. This is Anthony Daly for Tlacastle. Sean McMahon without the stick. Noel Brody. Brody wins possession. The referee has the notebook out. Early. Thought he was there was going to be a booking for the sparrow there, but the referee just a word of warning to Gerda Lachlan. Sean McMahon with the free just inside his own half. 
strikes at goal goals and straight and true, straight between the poles. Sean McMahon's third point of the game. Free taking ability proven there each time that he takes it. He seems to be well and truly able to strike it well. But the midfield duo at Daly and Baker don't seem to be dominating it. Into those Brody, they're casting hold the midfield dominance at the moment. One point separating the sides, one six to eight points. Fergie Tuhi in towards Kin Ralph. Donald Cahill is there for St. Joseph's. And the referee calls for the ball. And as the sides go in at half time, it's Clark Castle leading by one point, one goal, and six points to eight points. St. Joseph's with a more promising start, went into a five point lead, but the goal by Ken Riles brought Clark Castle back into it. And then they've picked up a couple of nice goals from Fergie Tuhi and a good point by Gerda Lockton. But it's all to play for as the sides go in at half time. Clark Castle lead on the score of one goal and six points to St. Joseph's, eight points. five to St. Joseph's and Sean McMahon will take it in the first minute of this second half Sean McMahon looks at the target strikes it in it looks to be well on its way it's gone straight between the poles Sean McMahon's fourth point of the game so the sides level at 1-6 to 9 points that's four points for the very accurate centre half back, Sean McMahon. John Casey with the puck out. Sean McMahon is under it. Bra breaks to Denny Scanlon. Over towards the Sparrow. Nicely flicked away by Ger Hoy. Out to the captain, Kieran O'Neill. Swings it over this side, over towards Andrew Whelan. Andrew picks it up nicely. Doesn't get as much distance as he would have wished into that one. Out comes the cornerback, Ger Kenny. Down towards Robert Fitzgerald. Kenneth Kennedy is there for St. Joseph's. Kennedy comes away with it. Drops it into the centre of the field. Ger Kenny and Fergal O'Sullivan tussling for it. And that's going to be a free there for a late challenge there from Dermot Daly. And it's going to be a free to Clark Castle. be James Healy to take it 60 metres from his own goal the breeze has got a good bit stronger than what it was in the first half and it's favouring Clark Castle in this second half James Healy with the free strikes it well but it's gone to the left and it's gone wide it's Clark Castle's fourth wide of the game, the first in the second half, and the sides deadlocked at 1 6 to 9 points. Puck out drops into the centre of the field. James Healy first times it. Fergie 2, he gets possession ahead of Sean McMahon. Nicely blocked down by McMahon. And the referee has blown the whistle. He's awarding a free to St. Joseph's. A decision certainly that Sean McMahon doesn't agree with. There's a substitute coming on to the St. Joseph's team. Brian O'Rourke is coming in wearing number 17. And Fergal O'Sullivan is the one who's being replaced. So Brian O'Rourke in it, left corner forward. And Fergal O'Sullivan is the one who makes way. In Ralph with the free, just outside the 45. Ralph strikes it in and he makes no mistake. Goal and three points for Kin Ralph. He's been Clark Castle's scorer in chief in the championship to date. Hook out drops into the centre of the field. Dermot Daly, but it's nicely flicked away from him. No Brody gains possession. Anthony Daly goes up for it, can't hold on to it. Greg Baker, Bernard Scanlon is there for Clark Castle. Down the centre. This is Robert Fitzgerald. Robert Fitzgerald from the 45 metre line, strikes it in, but he has sent it to the left and sent it wide.
Robert Fitzgerald, who have been in great form in the quarter-final and semi-final, has yet to score in this game. Patsy Fahey with the puck out. Ball breaks to Danny Scanlon. Scanlon strikes at goalwards. Kenneth Kennedy comes out. Oh, chance of a goal here. Yes, it's gone in. A mix-up inside between the goalkeeper, Patsy Fahey, and the cornerback, Kenneth Kennedy. And in nips Robert Fitzgerald. A rather fortuitous goal there for Clockastle. Certainly leave the defender and goalkeeper there again. Their signal slightly mixed up. Robert Fitzgerald lucky on a very long delivery from the middle of the field. And Fitzgerald would be happy to see that one go to the back of the net. This is Pat Healy in position. Flicked away from him. This is Andrew Whelan. Whelan strikes it in. Jerk Kenny is there for Clarkastle. Can't gain possession. Struck in inside, and that's gone for a 65. It was hit in by Brian O'Rourke. It came off the stick of John Casey, and it's gone for a 65. St. Joseph's Minters there discussing tactics. It's going to be a 65 for St. Joseph's. And Sean McMahon, the centre half back, will take it. Sean looks at the target. Jabs it up. But this one is gone to the left and it's gone wide. And St. Joseph's third wide of the game. So four points separating the sides. John Casey with the puck out. James Healy flicks it on. Sean McMahon is there for St. Joseph's. Nicely blocked by Fergie Tuhi. That's going to be a sideline cut to St. Joseph's. It'll be the left half back. Larkin has it, the one to take it. That one goes off the stick of James Healy. It's going to be another sideline cut. And Ollie Baker now seems to have come out into the centre of the field. Andrew Whelan has gone to full forward. James O'Connor still operating on the 40. Ali Baker with the sideline cut. Didn't make great contact. Dermot Daly in position. Lays it back to Ali Baker. Ali swings it over towards his brother Greg. Andrew Whelan is the one who nips in. Whelan has possession. Strikes it in, but he has sent it harmlessly to the right and wide. St. Joseph certainly needing a score there. Certainly a bad miss by Whelan. He should have done better because that's their second wide and they're now level with uh, Clare Castle in the wide situation in the second half when they seem to be dominating matters. John Casey with the puck out. Dermot Daly knocks it down. Ball breaks over towards Ali Baker. Breaks away from him. Victor O'Loughlin loses position. Denny Scanlon sends it in towards the Sparrow. Gerald Hoy has done a very good job in marking Gerald O'Loughlin. The clearance only comes straight out to Victor. Victor soloing through. And Ali Baker not agreeing with the decision, but Shawnee McMahon says that there was a trip there on Victor O'Loughlin. So it's going to be a free end to Clarecastle. Castle today hoping to gain their ninth title. Their last was in 94. Ken Ralph strikes it in and he makes no mistake. He puts it straight between the poles. That's a goal and four points for Ken Ralph. He now seems to be operating around right half forward. Alan Neville has gone to full forward. Fergie too, he's still operating at centre half. James Healy goes high for the puck out. Larkin has it. That's going to be a free to St. Joseph's. Just over 10 minutes gone in this second half. Five points between the sides. Sean McMahon with the free.
strikes it in but that one is tailing and it's gone to the right and wide almost 11 minutes gone the castle playing with the aid of the breeze in this second half Well batted out by Larkin Hassett. On to Noel Brody. Up towards Andrew Whelan. This is Jamesy O'Connor. Jamesy strikes it in. And again that one has gone to the right and gone wide. St. Joseph's wasting a number of chances at the moment. Reclaim the experienced players there. Jamesy O'Connor and Sean McMahon not picking off their scores. And I'm sure they may rue those before the end of the second half. John Casey with the puck out. Ali Baker is under it. Ball breaks down to Danny Scanlon. There's it back to Stephen Sheedy. Well blocked by James e. O'Connor. Stephen Sheedy again being put under pressure by Ali Baker. Anthony Daly. Darkin Hassett is there for St. Joseph's. So is Ken Ralph for Clark Castle. Ralph gets it on as far as Fergie Tuhi. So he strikes at goal boats and that's gone to the right and wide. The castle's sixth wide of the game. Patsy Fahey with the puck out. James Healy first times it, but it's gone over the touchline. Sideline cut to St. Joseph's. Will be Noel Brody the one to take it. Well cut in by Noel Brody. Well grabbed by Stephen Sheedy. Lays it off to Jerk Kenny. Ball breaks to Kin Ralph. Ralph looks at the target, strikes it in. And that's gone to the left and gone wide. So the score still, Clarecastle two goals and eight points. St. Joseph's nine points. Victor Lachlan is under it. Flicked away by Ali Baker. Greg Baker is also in there. Ball breaks to Danny Scanlon. Scanlon coming very much into the game in that left half forward position. This is Donald Cahill, the fullback. Ger Hoy is also there to help out. Hoy out this side of the field. On towards Dermot Daly. On to Andrew Whelan. Pulling out Martin Sheedy a long ways out. Flicked in towards Colin Mullen. But back covering there is the very experienced Anthony Daly. Well taken by Noel Brody. On to Andrew Whelan. Whelan strikes it in. Backs and forwards, tossing for an inside. Here's a chance. But Jer Kenny is there for Clark Castle. It fell to Colin Mullen. He let fly first time. Didn't make proper contact. And Jer Kenny was there to sweep it away. The referee has blown the whistle. He's going to throw in the ball. We're almost halfway through this second half. Four players tossing for it inside. Ball cleared over the far side, but Brian O'Rourke is first onto it. O'Rourke sends it over a pass, a dangerous ball. The referee has blown the whistle. He's awarding, he's awarding a free in, a free in to St. Joseph's. But the umpire inside, no, he had blown the whistle. The umpire had signalled that Brian O'Rourke had crossed the in line. So it's going to be a puck out. It's going to be a, a puck out for John Casey. John Casey to take the puck out, not in any great hurry. Straight down the centre, well grabbed by Fergie Tuhi. Lays it over towards the unmarked Victor Lachlan. Just inside the 65, Victor strikes it in goalwards. 
And Patsy Fahey watches that one as it goes over the end line and wide. Clark Castle's eight wide of the game. St. Joseph certainly needing a couple of scores. Finn Ralph takes that uncontested from the puck out and returns it straight down and straight over the crossbar. A goal and five points for Finn Ralph. Very slack marking there by the St. Joseph's back line. Yes, certainly. Ken Ralph was come out now on the half forward line. Seemed to be getting the better of the wing back, Larkin Hassett. Larkin Hassett, first times it. Up towards Dermot Daly. Stephen Sheedy is there for Clark Hassel. This is Larkin Hassett. Lays it over to Ali Baker. Ali Baker cutting through. Still Baker. Can he get the shot in? Well hooked. It's still dangerous inside near the goals. Bernard Scanlon is there. Scanlon gets it out a little. Dermot Daly is there for St. Joseph's. That's going to be a sideline cut to St. Joseph's. John Casey waits anxiously for the sideline cut. It'll be taken by Ali Baker. 17 minutes gone in this second half. Six points separating the sides. Well dropped in inside. Brian O'Rourke tries to latch onto it. Out to Jamesy O'Connor. Jamesy strikes it in. And Jamesy gets the point. Jamesy's fourth point of the game. Bringing the margin back to five points. Clark Castle playing with the aid of the breeze in this second half. John Casey with the puck out. Nicely taken by Kin Ralph. Referee has penalised Larkin Hassett. So free into Clark Castle. Kin Ralph to take it. And the referee there has penalised Kin Ralph as the slitter didn't come up properly. St. Joseph seems to have made a switch. Larkin Hassett has gone to right half back, and Kieran O'Neill is over to this side. So the referee is going to throw in the ball. Kin Ralph and Kieran O'Neill. Sean McMahon gets it out a little. Noel Brody is there for St. Joseph's. Colin Mullen. Ball breaks to Denny Scanlon. Down towards the Sparrow. Jerk can't gain position. Sean McMahon is there for St. Joseph's. Gets it back into the center of the field. Onto James e. O'Connor. James e. strikes it in. Dangerous ball as it drops inside. Brian O'Rourke trying to latch onto it. Andrew Whelan has position. Whelan strikes it in. But he has sent it to the right and wide. St. Joseph certainly wasting a number of chances. Yes, certainly. That's a great ball by Sean McMahon. Brian O'Rourke brought it down, but I'm afraid Andrew Whelan didn't find what he would have liked to score for Claire, for Dora Bearfield. Puck out drops into the centre. Well grabbed by Ali Baker. Ali bringing a bit more physical presence into the centre field. Position for St. Joseph's. The referee says that Ali Baker had cut the ball three times. And he's giving the free to Clark Castle. It'll be Anthony Daly to take the free. Anthony Daly from just outside his own 45. Sean McMahon gets a stick to it. Ball breaks to Robert Fitzgerald. But it's well flicked away there by the fullback Donald Cahill. Great interception there by Donald Cahill. But the danger still not cleared. This is Fergie Tuhi. Tuhi strikes it in, but that's gone to the left and wide. So the score still remains. Two goals and nine points for Tarcastle. Ten points for St. Joseph's. Christy O'Connor is coming into the side, wearing number 16. 
come into the side. In it, right corner forward, and Colin Mullen has been replaced. Goes off the hand of Stephen Sheedy, first time done by Kim Ralph. That's going to be a sideline cut to St. Joseph's. Eight and a half minutes left. Is it eight and a half minutes between Clare Castle and their ninth title, their first since 94? Kenneth Kennedy with the sideline cut. Ball breaks to Kin Ralph. It's a dangerous ball as it drops inside. Alan Neville trying to gain possession. The ball breaks out a little. Sean McMahon is there for St. Joseph's. The towering figure of Sean McMahon breaks outfield. That pass went astray. And in it's Victor O'Loughlin. Kenneth Kennedy is there. Kennedy gets his clearance upfield. Under it is Anthony Daly. The Castle now beginning to dominate in almost all positions. Oh, and that's floated in by Alan Neville. And that's gone straight over the crossbar. A good point by Alan Neville. That's his first score of the game. Now five of the six Clark Castle forwards have scored. On the other hand, just two of the St. Joseph's forwards have scored. James O'Connor and Noel Brody, but Noel, of course, had operated in the centre of the field all throughout. Jer Hoy seemed to go very low for that one. But the referee has awarded the free to St. Joseph's. It'll be Sean McMahon to take it. As the rain starts to come down here once again in Cusick Park. Sean McMahon with the free. Ball breaks out to Victor O'Loughlin, who's played very solidly in the centre of the field. This is Alan Neville, gets position ahead of Donald Cahill. Half block, but a ball breaks inside. This is Robert Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald strikes it in, but he has sent it to the left and sent it wide. That's Clark Castle's 10th wide of the game. So still six points separating the sides. Stephen Sheedy bats it out. Kenneth Kennedy does well. Up towards Andrew Whelan. Whelan from outside the 65. Floats it in towards goals. Backs and forwards clash inside. John Casey has possession. A hand pass out to the captain, Martin Sheedy. Well controlled by Danny Scanlon. Danny Scanlon cutting through the centre. Sean McMahon, but Fergie too, he's in there for Clark Castle. But out comes Ger Hoy, who's had a very good game at right corner back. Drops it into the centre of the field. This is James e. O'Connor. A rather wild challenge there by Stephen Sheedy. Referee calling Stephen Sheedy, giving a word of warning, and the notebook is out. The name of Stephen Sheedy is going into the book. Sean McMahon with the free. He's side trailing by six points. McMahon strikes it in and he sends it straight over the crossbar. Sean McMahon's fifth point of the game. The margin is back to five. Sean McMahon with five of those points for St. Joseph's. John Casey with the puck out. Fergie Tui in possession. Crosses the 45. Swings it in. Donald Cahill first down to it. Jer Hoy is also there for St. Joseph's. Clearance is blocked down. Donald Cahill first times it out. Noel Brody is there for St. Joseph's. Brody swings it across this side. Dermot Daly is onto it. Oh, that was a bad hand pass, but Ali Baker did well. And Ali gains possession. The hand pass inside, in towards Dermot Daly. St. Joseph still retained possession, but are not making progress. But the referee has blown the whistle. He's awarding a free in. There's another substitute coming onto the St. Joseph's team. David Hoy, wearing 21. 
He's coming into the side. He seems to be going back into a defensive role. Jer Hoy seems to be coming out from the right corner back position. And I think it is Dermot Daly, I think, is the one that's being replaced. But that one from Sean McMahon has gone to the right and wide. St. Joseph's ninth wide of the game. Just three minutes left. Three minutes between Clare Castle and their ninth title. John Casey with the puck out. Flicked on by Ken Ralph. This is Robert Fitzgerald. Fitzgerald strikes it in goalwards. It looks a good one. Yes, it's gone straight over the bar. That's a goal and a point for Robert Fitzgerald. So St. Joseph's look now as if they need a miracle at this stage. Certainly, Liam, a goal would do St. Joseph's cause at this stage, but I don't think they're going to get that goal. It looks like Clare Castle on their way to the Hamilton Trophy. Noel Brody is fouled in position. That's going to be a free end. Clark Castle are introducing a substitute. Kenny Morrissey is coming into the side. Wearing number 17. That's just a, an indication of how strong this Clark Castle panel is. And that Kenny Morrissey, who was a sub in the Clare team, who won the All Ireland final in 95 and 97 has come into the side it just shows the strength and depth of the panel James Healy is being replaced Sean McMahon with the free drops it in Ali Baker goes high for it ball breaks to Jamesy O'Connor Jamesy trying to cut his way through strikes it in well blocked inside by John Casey goalkeeper did very well there with a slippy wet ball and Sean McMahon Falls to the ground, but retains possession. That's a free to St. Joseph's. A free to St. Joseph's. And the rain really lashing down now here in Kiswick Park. Sean McMahon drops in the free, backs and forwards, pulling it inside. Ball is flicked in inside, but the, case, the keeper, John Casey, does well. A bit of a difference of opinion going on between some of the players in there, close to the goals. A bit of argy bargy going on in there. And it's dreadful conditions now here in Cusick Park. The rain is really lashing down. The rain really pouring down now here in Cusick Park. John Casey with the free out. We're into the last minute of the game. Six points separating the sides. So it looks as if Clark Castle are definitely on their way to their ninth title. This is Larkin Hassett. Drops it up towards goal. Stephen Sheedy is back in there for Clark Castle. Drops it out into the centre. Fergie too, he first onto it. So he gains possession, over towards the far touchline. Been put under all types of pressure there by Ali Baker. And that's going to be a sideline cut to St. Joseph's. We've gone over the 30 minutes. 2-11 to 11 points. And it looks like as if Victor O'Loughlin and his brother Gerard Sparrow are going to be the first two Castle players with five county titles. Loaded up inside, Andrew Whelan trying to gain possession. Loses the hurley, but it's going to be a free in. It's going to be a free in to St. Joseph's. It'll be Jamesy O'Connor to take it. Jamesy strikes it in. Backs and forwards, tussle for it inside. And a real pile up inside in front of the goals. As players from both sides begin to get involved. The referee has gone in. He's, he's awarding a free out to Clare Castle. So certainly time is now running out on St. Joseph's. 
We've gone over 31 minutes, six points between the sides. So certainly it looks as if Clark Castle are about to win their ninth title and the referee, Shani McMahon, calls for the ball. And Clark Castle have won their ninth county title on the score of two goals and 11 points to 11 points. So dejection on the face of the St. Joseph's players as they come off the field, six points between the sides. And great scenes of jubilation as the black and white of the Magpies come on to Cusick Park. Clark Castle are the county champions of 1997. They have won their ninth title. And the two Lachlan brothers go into the history books as the, as the two first players from Clark Castle to win five county titles. So the final score here from Cusick Park. Clark Castle, two goals and 11 points. St. Joseph's, 11 points. So the chairman of the Clare County Board, Robert Frost, about to present the Monsignor Hamilton Trophy to the winning captain, Martin Sheedy. Mm -hmm. I'd also like to thank, thank a lot of people now, 
I'd like to thank our loyal band of supporters who stuck with us through thick and thin. And thanks be to God, the good times are back. Yeah. Finally, I'd like to thank Joel Bearfield for a tough, physical, sporting game. I know the way you feel. We were there last year and we were down and out. But you have a very young side. And you're very committed. You have some many fine hurlers. And I've no doubt you turn us around the corner. Just to finish off, I'd like three cheers for Joel Bearfield. Hip hip! Hip hip! So hip fine hip. acceptance speech by the captain, the Martin Chidi. So Sean McMahon is not a man of the match award, but it's a, a man of the championship. And that honour goes to the great centre half back from St. Joseph's, Sean McMahon. <laughs> so Sean McMahon accepts the award as player of the championship. The crowd file out of Cusick Park. The Magpies are certainly in flying colours this evening, as I'm sure there will be a warm reception for them as they come into the village of Tarcastle with the Cannon Hamilton Trophy. Dejection on the face of the St. Joseph's players and mentors as they leave the field, but I'm sure, as Martin Sheedy said, their time is not far away. So, Tarcastle are the champions for the ninth time in Clare. Joining me is Clarecastle selector Oliver Plunkett and the top scorer in the game, Ken Ralph. Oliver, if I can go to you first. Another great day for the Magpies. Super day for the Magpies. A small bit of disappointment that we didn't, we didn't, we didn't win the double, but it was great to win the scene. Anyway, we have, after, coming, after last year, everybody was down and out, and it was a great comeback this year to win it. At the start of the year, it didn't look like as we were going to go anywhere, but the first match was a draw and played bad, and, but we stuck with it and they improved every, every game since they have improved. And, Fair play, they played him a powerful match again today. Well, Ken, you had a great year with Clark Castle. A contribution of 1 5, a great contribution in with conditions today. Yeah, conditions were bad. We knew it was going to be down to freeze today, but uh, yeah, it was good for the team. And we, you know, it was, uh, we promised ourselves this morning that we give a good account of ourselves, and thank God that's the way it, that's the way it worked out. Well, Oliver, had you time to put your thoughts together? I think it's Belly Gunner and the Munster Club. First time I believe we'll have to be told here now that it's Belly Gunner. So. We have no, we have no, we, I, as far as I remember, we never played them. But I mean, if, the, if there's anything to go by, and last year's performance, I think they, they, they played in the Munster Club final against Full Towns and they looked a hell of a team. So it'll be taking, it'll be, they'll, they'll be a hard note to crack, but sure, we'll, give them a go, we'll give it a go anyway, give it our best shot. Well, Kane, early in the game, St. Joseph's went up five points. Were you worried at that stage? Um, well, when teams knock over five points in the trot, yeah, you, you, you tend to get worried, okay. But um, it has happened earlier on in the year, so, you know, we, we were. Um, we knew that uh, we were going to come good eventually, and uh, thank God we did. We we, kinda, we, we ground him down, and by half time we were pint up. So um, yeah, uh, we, did, we knew that um, you know that we were going to have to knuckle down after they went five pints up, and thank God we did. Well, when you look through the panel of this player, the, the panel of players that's in it, there's, I think it's four or five that was on the clear intermediate panel, and can make a start in 15. There's a great bunch of players there. It is, it, is a, it is a headache to be honest about it. It is an absolute headache <coughs> picking the team. When you have just 25 or six players, and there's every there's subs are as, as nearly as good as the fellas are out there. And but, and, but I suppose it's a good way to have it. But fellas are disappointed they're holding all year and can't get and can't get into the team. It's very disappointing for them. But I suppose at the end of the day they're happy that once they win, once the team is winning, that's what counts. Well, Ken and Oliver, thanks very much for talking to us. We wish you the very best luck in the Munster Club. Thanks very much. Thanks very much. Hello. So the Monsignor Hamilton Cup is on its way to the Magpie country this evening on a fine performance they defeated St. Joseph's on the score of two goals and 11 points to 11 points. We leave you from Cusick Park. <laughs>